Good evening, I'm Victor Morgan, Rector of St. Luke's, and we're so glad that you're joining us for this service of evening prayer on the eve of the eighth Sunday after Trinity. And we, we hope that you will also join us tomorrow as we, for our morning service of Holy Communion at 9.30, which will also be uh, live streamed on, uh, on uh, Facebook and later available on YouTube. So we're glad to have you with us this evening. We have Reverend Ron Wikander uh, assisting and Jim Noblet on the camera and Eileen Kerr at the console of the organ. Uh, again, welcome to evening prayer. The order for evening prayer begins on page 21 in the prayer. Let my prayer be set forth in thy sight as the incense, and let the lifting up of my hands be an evening sacrifice. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O oh Lord, have mercy on us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter be entirely righteous and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and love, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do in this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, amen. amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We sit for the Psalms, which are the Psalms appointed for the first day of the week, for evening, beginning on page 348. O Lord, rebuke me not in thine indignation, neither chasten me in thy displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul also is troubled, but Lord, how long wilt thou punish me? Turn thee, O Lord, and deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. For in death no man remembereth thee, and who will give thanks 
he thinks in the pit. I am weary of my groaning. Every night wash I my bed and water my couch with tears. My beauty is gone for very trouble and worn away because of all my enemies. Away from me, all ye that work iniquity, for the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord hath heard my petition. The Lord will receive my prayer. All my enemies shall be confounded and sore vexed. They shall be turned back and put to shame suddenly. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Lord, my God, in thee have I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me, and deliver me. Lest he devour my soul like a lion, and tear it in pieces. While there is none to help. O Lord my God, if I have done any such thing, or if there be any wickedness in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that dealt friendly with me, yea, I have delivered him that without any cause is mine enemy. Then let mine enemy persecute my soul and take me. Yea, let him tread my life down upon the earth, and lay mine honor in the dust. Stand up, O Lord, in thy wrath, and lift up thyself because of the indignation of my enemies. Arise up for me in the judgment that thou hast commanded. And so shall the congregation of the people come about thee, for their sakes, therefore, lift up thyself again. The Lord shall judge the peoples. Give sentence with me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to the innocence that is in me. O let the wickedness of the ungodly come to an end, but guide thou the just. For the righteous God Try the very hearts and reins. My help cometh of God, who preserveth the, them that are true of heart. God is a righteous judge, strong and patient, and God is provoked every day. If a man will not turn, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, the ungodly travaileth with iniquity. He hath conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. He hath graven and digged out the pit, and has fallen himself into the destruction that he made for others. For his travail shall come upon his own head, and his wickedness shall fall on his own pate. I will give thanks unto the Lord according to his righteousness, and I will praise the name of the Lord most high. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Lord, our governor, how excellent is thy name in all the world. Thou that hast set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of the very babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, even the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. What, what is the man, man that, that thou art mindful of him, him and, and the son of man that, that thou visitest him. him? Thou madest him lower than the angels to crown him with glory and worship. Thou madest him to have dominion of the works of thy hands, and, and thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. 
all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowls of the air, and the fishes of the sea, and whatsoever walketh through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our governor, how excellent is thy name in all the world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 17th verse of the 5th chapter of Daniel. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor and for the majesty that he gave him all peoples nations and languages trembled and feared before him whom he would slew and whom he would keep alive and whom he would set up and whom he would put down but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointeth over it whomsoever he will. And thou his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives and thy concubines, have drunk wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand they breathe is the whose whose are all the ways hast thou not glorified then was the part of the hand sent from him and this writing was written and this is the writing that was written mine mine tico you far sin this is the interpretation of the thing mine god hath numbered thy kingdom and fin finished it tico Thou art weighed in the balances, and art found wanting. Paris, thy kingdom is divided, and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him, that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And that night was Belshazzar, the king of Chaldeans, slain. Here endeth the first lesson. The Magnificat, the Song of Mary, beginning on page 26 in the prayer book. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he, he hath regarded God, the lowliness of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath, he hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, 
Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 13th verse of the 25th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. And after certain days, King Agrippa and Bernice came unto Caesarea to salute Festus. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix, about whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him. To whom I answered, It is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die before that he which is accused have the accusers face to face and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime against him. Therefore, when they had come hither without any delay on the morrow, I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth, against whom, when the accusers stood up, they brought none accusation of such things as I supposed, but had certain questions against him of their own superstition, and one of Jesus, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I doubted of such manner of questions, I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem, and there be the judge of these matters. And because, <coughs> but when Paul had appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar. And then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself. Tomorrow, said he, thou shalt hear him. And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come, and Bernice with great pomp, and was entered into the palace of hearing, with the chief captains and principal men of the city, at Festus's commandment, Paul was brought forth. And Festus said, King Agrippa and all men which are here present with us, you see this man about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, and that he himself hath appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord, wherefore I have brought him forth before you, and specially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination had, I might have someone to, somewhat to write. For it seemeth to me unreasonable to send a prisoner, and not withal to signify the crimes laid against him. Here ended the second lesson. The Song of Simeon, the Nunc Dimittis, page 28. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. I believe in God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O 
O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. For it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, who, whose never-failing providence ordereth all things both in heaven and earth, we humbly beseech thee to put away from us all hurtful things and to give us those things which are profitable for us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rust and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thine only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting in power infinite, have mercy upon this whole land, and so rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, the Governor of this state, and all others in authority, that they, knowing whose ministers they are, may above all things seek thy honor and glory, and that we and all the people, duly considering whose authority they bear, may faithfully and obediently <coughs> honor them according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, Send down upon our bishops and other clergy and upon the congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee. Pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for all police officers, firefighters, and other emergency service personnel who remain on the job at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all medical doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, and all who work for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for these United States that violence, hatred, discord, and prejudice may be put to flight and the blessings of peace, civil discourse, goodwill, and trust may be restored. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those within this parish family who will celebrate birthday days this coming week. As they grow in years, so may they grow in grace. By name we pray for. Megan Thrasher, Bob Parrish. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who celebrate wedding anniversaries that their homes may be havens of blessing and peace. Jerry and Pat McConnell. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who serve in the armed services of this country, especially 
those who have connections with this parish church, Wesley Ryan McIntosh, Christian Wade Newman, Kyle Morgan, Sam Soon, Matthew Muse, Jake Baker, and Mark Rodriguez. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who have requested our prayers. Murray Newman, Neil and Priscilla McDonald, Bob Bradley and Anna Brown, Zendel Morton, Andy Lev Cooker, Gordon Rainier, Elizabeth Ann White, Tim Higdon, Rosemary Gore, Connie Parks, Dot Washburn, Rose Grass, Evelyn Bryant, Eileen Kerr, Hoot and Gwen Skelton, Jim and Ruby Truscott, Bruce Birkinshaw, Pat and Sharon Deary, Tom Hofer, Ray Pickett, Ann Thomason, Marilyn Seidel, Don Hess, Marilyn Kiffmiller, Roseanne Johnston, Jackie Lumpkin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the family of Lorraine Hertzie, who departed to be with the Lord on Monday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. <laughs>